lights up the room. So let's start. Anyway, welcome to two awoken blondes or two awake blondes. What should we call it, Ange? Two two awake blondes. Two awake blondes sounds great. <laughs> How are you today? How are you today? What are you doing? I'm good. I've been out in the sunshine. I got lots of sun and vitamin D. Uh, went to the park, you know, got some fresh air, did a little bit of exercise. So wow. I'm feeling pretty positive. <laughs> Isn't it cool? I mean, you go into lockdown and you lose weight. So there you go, ladies. <laughs> you can lose loads of weight now. Um, yeah, I've been enjoying the sun. Mind you, I didn't get up till like... What time did I get up? About two, two or three o'clock. I was sitting up all night studying my tarot. I'm oh, really brilliant! Love it. Oh, it's so much fun. I'm just going to close the door. So that we're <laughs> Pardon? I'm just closing the door so that okay, uh, we, okay. You know, yeah, not be, be undisturbed, basically. Okay, and yeah. just collecting all this positive stuff. And I've got to tell you something here. This is like. You gotta laugh or be really sad here. I don't know, but you know that thing about the man, that the picture of the guy, that um, it said that he was run over by a steamroller <laughs> and he died of COVID. <laughs> One of my friends said, "Oh my God, that's so terrible. That's so terrible. How sad." <laughs> Oh my God! Oh my God! How can anybody not get it? It's a joke, anyway. <laughs> Uh, anyway, these are lovely people, but they seem to, they're just not understanding my jokes, are they? It's just like, it's just like <laughs> you know, I, love her, I love her to bits, so I have to say that. She's my beautiful friend. But still, she didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, um, the mind is very, you know, reactive. The mind is very reactive. Like All of our minds are very reactive, um, it, given whatever, you know, we see the world as we are. So mm -hmm. if you're feeling very serious and threatened about COVID, then anything even a joke's going to be like you're not going to be able to see the funny side of it mm. probably something along those lines you know yeah yeah well we're here to lighten the load <laughs> to have some fun and today we've got a big interview coming up with um paul boggy brighton Woo! Um, the first thing i want to ask him is What's the Brighton? <laughs> Why Brighton? Because he lives in Hayes. <laughs> he lives near. I wanted to know what the boggy bit was. What the I want to know what the boggy <laughs> I thought it was boggy. <laughs> what? I thought it was poor boggy. I'm uh, sure he's going to reveal everything. I'm sure he'll re um, reveal everything. Pardon? <laughs> I'm sure it all will, re will be revealed. Can you hear me okay? Am I, I can hear you really, really well. Okay, okay good. Well, let's bring him in before he disappears on us and does a run there. Because you think, oh my God, these women are mad. Um, anyway, but as I say, we're going to have fun on this program. We, we're going to do our own little whatever comes to mind. And also we're going to bring on people that we think are going to be a lot of fun to interview as well. So um, let's bring on Sifu Boggy. A spiritual Jedi. Is that what it means? Okay, I, 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 along, I, I think it's in that vein. Hi, <laughs> I don't know, how you doing? Welcome. Hi, Susie. Call it again. Remind me. <laughs> two, awake, two awake blondes. Is that it, Ange? Yep. Two awake blondes. Anyway, I've decided I'm getting rid of my glasses because I'm trying to train my eyes back to the way they were before I wore them. But you gotta forgive me. This is a little bit of a security blank. <laughs> I've got them on my head here. Anyway, it's beautiful to have you here on this gorgeous, gorgeous sunny day. Um, and if it's okay, I just, I just want to just start by asking you, first of all, um, what kind of day have you had today? Ah, uh, it was a normal day for me, really. Well, normal day off day for me because I'm still working. I'm, I'm actually a essential uh, worker. So uh, I'm still working, but today so I've just done some Qigong, done some stuff for, uh, we've got a sub subscription-based uh, 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 TV network called The Tribe, and so I did, so I did a little bit for that, and then I also uh, had to do some filming for my school, my Qigong school, which is called The Cup of Qi, so yeah, I've been busy. So Lots of fun. Normal stuff. Lots of fun, basically. Yeah, um, well, outside. Okay, if it's okay with Angie as well, I've got another, just another few things before I hand you over to her. 
Um, we've never shared, I've never shared a program yet. So I'm a Leo <laughs> and Angie, what birth that you're a Libran. Luckily, <laughs> she's a Libran because if she was another Leo, we'd get absolutely nowhere. What birth are you? Oh. For me, I am Aries. Wow, there you go. Two fire signs and an air sign. Okay, well, you, Angie's going to keep everything nice and gentle and grounded. And, and with me, you don't know what's going to happen. I might burst out singing, you never know. But anyway, coming back to you, Paul, what's the Brighton? <laughs> Where does That's the my, Brighton come from? Brighton's my surname. Oh, is that it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, every, everybody forgets that Brighton can be a surname. Um, in, in, in actual fact, in actual fact, Brighton was named after somebody. That it, that's where it comes from. It was Lord Brighton in about the age before that. It was Bridlow or or Bridlow or some or, or some something. Or, I forget the. Uh, but uh, yes, um, am I? I've always been. I've always been down Brighton, Bournemouth, Worthing. Um, <clears throat> you know, for the last like thirty eight years, teaching martial arts. There's all the coast people are always. Uh, the, the seems, or at least in the UK, that there's a lot more people awake in the coast mm -hmm. uh, before everywhere else, and and so I've always that had meditational and qigong is energizing exercises, but it's also self healing, and it's also uh, there's also is a martial art or defense side to it. So it's always been quite big down there. So I've, uh, down in Brighton, I've always I've got uh, friends down there from martial arts, but I'm also a uh, former figure skater, uh, ice hockey player, and there was ice drinks down there as well. Which Okay, again... so coming to my, my second question before I hand you over to Angie, how did this all come about? I mean, what, what, what happened? There's always something that happens to someone or they go through an experience. Where did this all come from? Just tell us a little bit. Go right back to the beginning because I want to know where all this came from, basically. Uh, well, um, well, right. So, I was around, well, my, my, my parents split up when I was around about six years old, six, seven years old. But I didn't actually get divorced until I was nine. And around about nine, I started, which is sort of, well, this is sort of this is to do with it, but it's sort of separate. Uh, is that um, I, I started I started having these dreams of past life stuff, and I I, I started um, having uh, this, all, all this information, sort of remembering that um, this is my first time round. But I was smart enough to know, or the, my, my mum was always a little bit of a um, hub contract, and always you know you know if you coughed oh you know you, you're gonna die you got tuberculosis or you know there's some, something major so i knew to keep this sort of stuff to myself because people around me is like you know this was 19 so that was 1979 so like you're a nutter you know if you start talking about that sort of stuff especially at nine years old um and i was bullied for being different anyway as a kid and so round about 11 years old uh um i started doing uh, a martial art called uh kiksa um well at the time it was called katida it's now called kiksa and it was the the, the the it had like 27 moves or 26 moves but it also had meditation and the meditation is what really it, uh, and it focused on what they called ki which i now call like energy or chi prana uh prana not piranha but prana um and um i was really into that and went up the ranks quite quickly even by, by like 12 i was already you know had done a couple of belts and they had a school they had a judicator that came to the martial arts to do the testing and that judicator pretty much took one look at me and said um sort of said under his breath to me but but uh, you know not not to my my parents is that um in past lives you were my sifu um and in past lives i was your sifu and i will be Sorry, your... can you explain what a sifu is i will indeed i, I will so sifu sifu in essence some people should say sifu is like sensei or master but sifu is actually more a guide a muse somebody points you along the way senseis in japan senseis are masters i am the master i am the top you do everything i do everything sticks in a certain way sifu 
actually means in Chinese means father or parents. So it's more of, in a positive way, it's more of a loving somebody who guides you, but doesn't necessarily rule you, but it points you in that way, points, points you in that direction. So my first, um, so even though I did one martial art, the, these two Sifu, two Sifus, the two brothers, uh, Sifu Shun, uh, which is their surname, but in China, the first child can sometimes be named, keep the surname as their first name. A bit like in old schools back in the 70s and 80s, you know, they'd call you, you know, if your surname is Brighton, you'd be known in Brighton, you wouldn't be known as your first name. Um, and his brother was called Poe, and both of them, um, they did um, Shaolin, um, they were. Uh, from the Shaolin Monastery, so they were, they were part Buddhist, but they also uh, studied in uh, Wudan Mountain in China, which is a Taoist, uh, Taoist philosophy, Taoist mountain. And Wudan, well, basically, George Lucas's Star Wars was based on the Force and the light and the dark side, which is the yin and the yang, and the Jedi were actually what, uh, what, what well, the grey Jedi, which we never really got to, but in the original story, uh, before Disney uh, tampered with it, um, you have the, the Jedi, which is like pure light, the Sith, which is the dark, but, the, but, George, but um, Luke Skywalker actually found out that before those two existed, there was one between, which was the grey Jedi, or grey coat, and they were both of light and dark, because they believe there is no good, there is no bad, there just is. And when you keep fighting this game of good and bad, you'll all, there'll always be, there'll always be casualties, there'll always be problems. But when you realise that everything just is and everything is experience and you learn, you know, even the, the, the bad things that have happened in your life are there to help you grow and help you expand and move forward, then you, you, you know, you open up to, to a whole different reality. So yeah. that's what sort of Star Wars was based on. Thank you. So, so, that, Lauren, some question, a question? Sorry, let's get you back. Yeah. Didn't I mention, didn't I start talking about Jedi's before we got on the call? Do you remember I mentioned about Jedi's before we got on the call? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Do you remember I mentioned about Jedi's? Yes, you did. I'm trying to yes. get the call from together, but I don't know how to do that yet. But anyway, carry on, Angie. You had a question. Uh, no, so basically this yin and yang, you know, the good and the bad and the bad and the good. It's like what we're going through right now. If we didn't have a dark to be experiencing our light, then we wouldn't be able to experience it because if everything was just light, we wouldn't have anything to contrast it against. So this sort of battle that we're in at the moment, this spiritual battle, um, it's, it's all a big cosmic game in a way. It's like a cosmic, yeah. I wouldn't say joke because that's taking it a bit too far. But, you know, if you want to be a spiritual warrior, then you've got to be able to sort of detach a little bit from it. Um, you know, and that's kind of getting into the silent witness, right? Yep, yep, very much so. And even the word Jedi, you know, a lot of people oh, just think it's a word. Well, Jedi actually comes from the Egyptian word with a little D on, on the beginning, the Jedi, and the Jedi means pillar of light. A light really? Yeah, it means, and, and the Jedi in Egypt, there was a group of Jedi in Egypt, and they were actually what, in, in, in China, they'd say, yeah, they were Taoists. They were, and Taoism, Taoism's a word, just means the way, the path, the balance. Mm. Um, and, and so, like, you know, I look at an American Indian, and I say, oh, he's a Taoist, you know, because he follows his own way or path. So the Jedi in Egypt, they were the keepers of the pillar of light. And what, right. do you, what do they, what do the Jedi have? They have lightsabers, which is the pillar of light. And the pillar of light, you have the Kundalini, that is the yeah. fire. And yeah. what, what most people, the reason why a lot of people get psychosis in, kundal, in doing lots of Kundalini and it drives them emotionally crazy is because what they're not aware of is that from the, when you pull in your bum and you tuck in your chin, your head aligns with, uh, with a, a, a cord or a crystalline tube which goes straight through you, straight into the earth and straight into heaven. And that is the, in Chinese, they call it the thrusting channel. In, in the Egypt, it's the, the Jedi, the pillar of light. And the pillar of light is the water to the fire. 
So the water is the yin. So up here, where's my hand? Up here, a lot of people call this the yin yang symbol. It's actually Tai Chi. Tai Chi, yin yang is half a black circle, half a white circle. Yeah. And it's the opposing opposites. The, the, the Piscean age we came from, where, you know, men and female, oh, you know, men don't understand women and women don't understand men. And good doesn't, you know, good against bad. That's opposing opposites. That is yin yang. Mm. This symbol up here is Tai Chi. These two flow together and create harmony. Mm. And that's what we're in now. That's what the whole 2012 going into the age of Aquarius, the whole thing in the age of Aquarius is the age so, of understanding. Would you say that this, what, what came out of China, you know, the Taoist tradition, um, would you say that that, would you say uh, that's been... That's okay. I'm, I sit on the yoga ball, you see, and I roll backwards. Perfect. <laughs> Boogie <laughs> fell off his yoga ball. <laughs> you got to laugh. Everybody, you know, just got me. Yeah, off. Yeah, I just rolled off my yoga ball. Yes, don't worry. It's not, yeah, because I see, I'm on a, I've got a yoga ball, and the yoga ball sits on the bullet ball. So normally, so what? What happened was I got a little bit too. Uh, Carried away, and I rolled backwards. And <laughs> anyway, okay, we're let's good ground, now. Let's ground. Let's take some deep breaths. Can we just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but that's actually a very important lesson. Never take yourself or anything else too seriously. <laughs> right. Not absolutely. Now, my God, you can't take anything seriously <laughs> anyway. Not, not with me around. You can <laughs> never take anything too serious. Because, but that's the point. Um, the whole again with the seafood, not sensei. Is that set? Well, you know, we've we've been through all this. Oh, you know, I'm the best. You must listen to every guy say da, da, da. You'll listen when you're ready. You know, the information is there, and and the whole thing of in the Taoist circles they talk about being childlike, having fun, being being mm. playful. Mm. You know, you know the the biggest thing with the dark. You want to scare off the dark. Tell it you love it. And, 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 be, and be happy and, and jolly in its presence. And pardon my French, it, it, will, it will pap itself. It will, it, will, because, it will tick a brick. Because what you resist persists, basically. If you keep resisting and resisting and resisting, it's not going to change. If you give out, well, if you give out, you get back. So if you give out fear and panic and you fight, that's all you're going to have within you. That's very much caused the miracles. Can I just ask you something? Very, Angie, are you finished with your question? Uh, well, I mean, we, the other parallel we can draw is Neo in the Matrix. You know, that when he learns how powerful his own mind is. I mean, this, this, these lessons are buried in so many different things. And that, that Matrix film used a lot of the Buddhist traditions, hidden secrets from Buddhism in that one. So that, you know, I, I was seeing on Facebook, somebody said that when you draw back the curtain at the Wizard of Oz, it's just this old man behind the curtain. Mm. And it's nothing to be frightened of. Yeah. And, like Alice you know, Wonderland with the cards. She just looks at them and says, you're just a pack of cards. Push. That's it. Well, well, well the, the Matrix was both actually both Buddhist and Taoist. You know, the, the whole point, you know, they're flying in the air. If you look at all the old Chinese movies, they all fly in the air, you know, and they're fighting and they're flying. And the reason they do that is... You mean like monkey? Yeah, like, like, just, just like monkey, but the, monkey? the whole... Monkey? Yeah, monkey? <laughs> um, yes, I grew up in that era. Ironically <laughs> enough, I went to Friday school, Catholic Friday school, and it was on the same. It was on the same day as Monkey Magic. So I, I'd watch Monkey Magic, then go to Catholic school. So I was studying Buddhist tradition, and then and then um, then going go to Catholic school for Friday school. But the whole point of of that flying in the air was it, there was there was a very good film that actually trans American film that translated it called the Bulletproof Monk, and what they what in that they say is. Is, is that they are manipulating energy that chi air can become solid that that the whole point and again quantum physics you know when everybody says oh this is this is rubbish this is just look at quantum well physics. it's it's, it's just science. like the indian sadhus um i don't know if you've heard of neem karoli baba yes. i mean apparently some of them they have the, the power to teleport themselves be in two different places at different times uh Holding. they could perform you know what we would call miracles um, but of course, none of this information really ever gets into the mainstream here. Or maybe it has. I mean, you know, all the stuff that was considered alternative. I grew up with my mother was an acupuncturist. 
my stepdad was an osteopath in the 80s that was sort of alternative but now I think that you know this idea of like alternative stuff I don't really think it is alternative anymore well, 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 for a long time they called it new, new Age, which is quite funny when you consider most of this information is older mm. than, than, than modern day uh, medicine. So that's why they said alternative rather than New Age. Um, and, and, and the irony is, is that the medical system can't... Because I actually tra trained in what's called TIPTA, which is Chinese osteopath. So Chinese osteopath with what they call Fajing uh, is explosive power. If you ever seen Bruce Lee do the one inch punch where, you know, he, his hand only moves a little bit and that person goes flying. It's about using all your energy, the whole body to, to create. So in, so you have chiropractor, uh, osteopath, chiropractor uses direct force on, on the bones to, to realign them. Osteopath uses manipulation. In Titta, they use both and plus um, far Jing. so they use the whole body to click the body uh, back into place um, and then one of my uh, one, one of my uh, students and one of my best friends Fred Bleach he's a former osteopath from um, of, done it for over 40 years but like 20 years ago in the UK they changed the way that they, they they wanted to bring osteopath into the fold of, or in the medical tradition but what they said was is that oh yeah you can come in but you're not allowed to diagnose you're not allowed to get to give uh, information mm -hmm. so they took away the ability to actually do the job properly because mm -hmm. the, oste the original osteopaths and in Ch Chinese medicine is that your goal is not to is not to uh, do the symptomology. It's actually to 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 you know, actually the the reasons you're ill. Work on that, not just the symptoms. Because somebody says, "Oh, got a headache," and oh, here's a tablet. To, well, all that tablet does, all the pill does, it, it kills the nerve that that's uh, uh, that's to the headache. That's like a fire bell going off, and I get an axe and I chop. the symptom. You're not into the core. Anyway, I, I've got a big question for you because. I'm always thinking about the person on the street, the person that doesn't know a lot about this. Well, you know, all my life I've been different because I never take medication because my whole outlook is so different. So how do you approach someone? Okay, this is like their first day, okay? They've seen something and they're interested. There's some interest in here. I really want to understand a little bit about how can I stay well? Because we know, we know that the answer to everything is building immunity, is, is eating the proper foods, is raising our vibrations and staying in the light and being happy. Nothing can really harm us when we do that. But I'm talking about, we've had years and years and years of spiritual awakenings. I'm interested in how you, would approach someone they come to see you and they say oh um i don't understand anything i want like the first step to understanding something so because you're so passionate about this paul how would you bring it down to the basics with a person that knows very very little so they've taken like that much of a red pill even smaller well uh, we we've we've made there's different ways people come come to me so um so when you say they a lot of the time most people will most people will only ever look at alternative stuff when ev nothing else has worked when when everything else has failed and and you know and and it's almost the the, the last shot um so some so if like I used to do car boot massage. I used to do uh, massage to car boot. So it would just be people that, oh, massage. One of the first questions was, oh, I, do not, I don't have to get naked, do I? And it's like, well, not, not all massage requires you to get naked, uh, for starters. But it's like sometimes the best way to help somebody is just to do it. It's just to, I mean, I can talk to the hind legs off a donkey and then persuade the donkey to go for a walk afterwards but <laughs> all that information will just blow your, your your most people's brains so sometimes you just simply do so if it's they come on the massage side i'll just give them a massage they say oh it feels better so we'll hear some techniques that will help you keep that going um on the qigong side um qigong there's a very uh, simple exercise uh, I give away free called Willow Tree Qigong. Now, medically, uh, this exercise has um, helped people, has, has 
help people with uh, over 30 years of chronic pain, help people with ME, MS, fibromyalgia, uh, has helped uh, uh, back, back problems, has helped uh, poor circulation, arthritis, people who suffer from migraines for years. For fibromyalgia, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, I mean, what what this exercise does is it's very simple. It's the first. It's it's like the first step. I mean, the other ones I've I've had people uh, quite re like just like a year ago who within um, one person I'm thinking of, uh, yeah, had uh, chronic. She had uh, uh, I think it was fibromyalgia, chronic uh, pain, uh, agoraphobic, um, always in pain all the time. And within a month of practicing, she had, I think she actually says like, like the first week, but in a month of practicing a couple of exercises, the pain had almost gone. And she was, you know, and she, she was, uh, um, what now, a year later, she gets less and less uh, uh, fearful, even to the fact now we even, she, she wrote a book and we, we've had her on on the show um you know and and where before that would never ever happen but that's building people's co confidence can you show us how to do that little technique <laughs> without falling off the yoga ball this time um, um, yeah so let's just move that out of the way so therapy. willow willow tree qigong uh quite simply is so you can sort of do it seated, but you just got to be careful right. if you've We're got arms in your chair. Um, you just yeah. got to be careful about hitting your arms on the chair. But basically, Willow Tree Qigong is shoulder whip, whip stance, feet flat on the floor. Um, your feet can either be straight ahead or 45 degrees outwards, whichever is more comfortable for you. Make sure your knees point in the same direction. You bend your knees like you're skiing or snowboarding. You put in your bum. And then from here, all you do is with your bum pulled in, you turn to the left, turn to the right, turn to the left, turn to the right. Try to keep your nose in line with your belly button. And you're simply, this is called twist the waist of Willow Tree Qigong. The whole idea is you're not forcing the arms to move. You're not doing this. You're actually, by turning the waist, the arms are naturally moving on their own. If you ever watch a toddler, Sometimes they go, I don't want to go to school, I'm bored. Or I want to go to school because I'm bored because it's COVID-19. Um, but the whole idea <laughs> is to that just literally twist the waist from side to side. <laughs> and you do, and with the bum pulled in, and the longer you can do it, the better. But a good for, uh, five minutes of this. Um, if you wake up stiff and achy in the morning, there's actually a reason why you're waking up stiff and achy in the morning, but that's a whole conversation on its own. But if you wake up stiff and achy in the morning or, or you're travelling about um, and you're stiff and achy, five minutes of this will help loosen you up. If you struggle to sleep at night, five minutes of this before you go to bed will help you uh, at night. It's a very simple and easy exercise and it's one of the, one of the two exercises I, I give away uh, um, on my, uh, on, on my uh, school, on teachable school that we, we give. And it's a very simple exercise. But when people... When you do something, because the whole point of the Taoist approach is that even with philosophy, philosophy is action. You know, you, you don't just think something, oh, well, you're just a scholar. And, and, and with scholarship, you're just, oh, just information. And it goes into ego. You have to feel it. You have to do it. You have to understand it. So em Embody it? Yeah, yeah, very much so. That's the word. Um, and so, yeah, so, so the Taoist approach is, is like, so in healing, the Taoist approach is there is no golden, golden pill. You have to do it yourself. You actually have to practice it yourself. And by practicing it your, you, yourself, you become it, you know, it, it is. And because the, the problem is we've got so used to the medical profession say, oh, take this tablet and everything and be sorted. And it's like, well, it doesn't happen. It doesn't actually happen, you know, and most tablets have some sort of a uh, side effect. Okay. The only side effect of this is that it's going to affect you. That's the only side effect it, it has. So, so I, I suppose we're probably going to give out your website at the end of the, uh, but you can plug it now if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, yes, uh, at the moment I'm still on www.sifu, S-I-F-U, boggy, B-O-G-G-I-E, dot com. That's uh, the, and then that will take you to there's different things we're, we're doing. We like I say, we um, are, are, we have a we ha I have my own show called the well, own network called the Way of Conscious Mindfulness Network. From there, we've actually got um, the 
to the way of conscious mindfulness tribe tv which is where because of the restrictions of facebook youtube instagram um we we went on to subscription base so it allowed us to talk more freely about the stuff um that we talk about because just just quite recently if you especially if you're on youtube one of my favorite yeah, is uh, the edge of wonder together. and a lot of them all of them are going private you know, going on to their own subscription base you've got um a london reel that that did a show with um david ike and it was it was banned instantly you, you know is that for whatever reason, I don't information. Think we're yet, but to worry well, about that. But so hopefully, at some point. But I know. Yes, but let's come back again. Let's come back. So that was brilliant. Thank you so much. Because, as I said, for someone who's starting out, that is a really good way for them to understand what you said. Now, we, you came onto the Zoom with us um, a couple of days ago, and we loved your approach because it's so positive, isn't it, And Yep. We're not going to hell in a handbasket, so to speak. There's nothing to worry about. We're well, 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 there's one thing I just, just want to quickly say. That I'm actually known as Boggy the Ghostbuster because I've been to the most haunted houses in the UK and in Russia. I actually went to an FBI, um, sorry, uh, a CIA, no, not CIA, a KGB. I'll get, I'll get the initials right in a minute. A KGB <laughs> prison, and, and that was like a real poltergeist central where things fly your head and every it always happens i walk in somewhere everything stops wow. everything and and in this this place these guys are used to things flying all the time and so i walked in and they were actually more scared that it stopped than you know then when it was actually happening and when wow. i left again well, it all kicked off again and the whole reason for that is yeah, we don't think of shields, people in spiritual worlds. Oh, yeah, build a shield, build a wall to protect yourself. In war, when somebody's got a big, big shield or big wall, the enemy's got something to aim at, the enemy's got something to attack at. But a ninja who is in the filter, or think of Predator, you ever seen the movie Predator, and they're invisible because they've got a filter, you can't see them all. And the whole point of a filter is you only allow in what you want and, and it's not you don't allow in any bad but you only allow in what helps you grow mm -hmm. so you say you're only allowing what helps you grow and then again like in the past when i've had haters come on on my show i just go i love you you're awesome thank you so much for being here love you do <laughs> too i love you bye love you and funny enough you know they don't last long um and i've done this i, I was a close protection officer for for over 10 years and uh at dorman done martial arts and i you know i yeah, i've got big ears and i i, I look a bit uh, even you know when i was younger i had uh, Back in the 80s, I, I permed hair, you know, I went the Craig McLaughlin route, One picture. and I permed hair, and, and I, and, well, I actually looked like Henry from Neighbours, I actually ended up in a, um, oh, yeah, oh, it was gorgeous, do you remember? <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that, I'm that, that good, but the whole point was, is that um, when people, you know, are aggressive, I just, you fire humour at them, and you, you it's subterfuge, you fire humour, and you flip it around, and one of the biggest lessons for me was the movie Roxanne with Steve Martin uh, when he had the, the big nose and that was based on a, 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 well, a play called Bergerac but he had this yeah. big nose and they did the 20 something betters that the guy called him big nose and he says is that all you could come up with and he goes well let, throw, a di throw, a, throw a dart in throw a dart in the board he got the number the, yeah. the, the bully got the 20 so he came up with 20 bet you know something I'm just I'm just getting the, the feeling that you would be really good at helping kids that get good bullied at school mm. I was bullied you know I, I was it, it's quite funny because most people say, oh you know you know you're the scary one and it's like well you know when you're but you know yeah you get bullied but well, so what happened that's why I did martial arts but what happened while I did martial arts I didn't like fighting so I learned how to firstly take a punch then take an emotional punch and how to take a spiritual punch and right. that twist the waist that twist the waist so going from side to side is, is the first martial technique I learned. If somebody pushes you and that force naturally goes, well, as they push you, you just go yeah. through, and they're leaning forward and your other hand hits them in the back of the head. <laughs> as as they go as they're going past you, you hit them in the back of the head for good measures. So um, Lauren, I've got a couple of questions here. Okay. First of all, uh, 
the boggy bit. Could you tell us about that? And also, if you if you if you wouldn't mind telling us about some of your previous lives. Oh, oh, okay. Um, right, yes, yeah, so the boggy bits. The book. Well, the boggy bit. Um, the two seafoods, uh, Shun and Po. Um, that in the in traditional martial arts in the on the ancient knowledge, you know, like 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 American Indians, they give you names. You're you're given a name, and my actual martial art name is Tyso Boggy. So Tyso, uh. Tyso, Tai from the word Tai Chi. So Tai, that's supreme. So mm -hmm. supreme lower chaos, otherwise big trouble. So mm -hmm. I was known even as a kid, I was known as, you know, in, in this uh, very much like a, a Jackie Chan character or, or like Charlie Chaplin. I was a bit of an instigator, a bit of a rebel. And I caused trouble even when I wasn't, you know, doing it on purpose, I would call, cause trouble. And the Boggy is a bit like the Tai Chi symbol which means um, the balance between the chaos and the calmness. So okay. it's you taking all these chaotic things and then ma making them calm. Or when uh -huh. things are too calm, you're the instigator that pokes uh -huh. the bear to, to, to bring things up. Because, you know, what that people don't realise, we need this. You know, reminded me, this, sorry, Paul. Sorry, yeah. it reminded me of when I went into the therapeutic community what you said we all came in there you know i was in there for nearly two years and i recovered from bpd you know which i uh, don't believe in but without medication we all came in there from different backgrounds and beliefs and we clashed everywhere you come in there with all the madness and the chaos like the world and then you start to awaken and what starts to happen is you go completely the other way <laughs> <laughs> you know, so if you were so narcissistic, you go completely the other way and start wanting to take care of everyone. And it's all about bringing it all back into balance. So within the last um, six months of you being in the therapeutic community, you come back into balance and that's when inner peace came in. And, and it's exactly mm -hmm. what you're saying there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, and what yeah, was the it? NHS that was. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, my, my, see, in the West, again, everything's been altered or changed so people can't see what what certain things really are or really mean so martial arts has been altered martial everybody thinks martial arts is fighting martial arts is actually about personal development it's about understanding yourself and understanding how to do things now yeah so i'm just just getting the the, the book the uh, dan millman the the way of the peaceful warrior or something i don't know if yeah. you've heard of that book yeah yeah, yeah. And, and and yeah there's, and there's lots of like you know good books about that and it's good under, you know understandings i mean the, the, there was a, a military advisor from China called uh, Sun, Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu's, and he did the, the art of, of war, which became the art of strategy. And the art of strategy has been used in business for the past 50 years. The reasons, you know, one of the main reasons why the Americans lost the Vietnam War was because the Vietnamese generals studied uh, um, this, this art of strategy. And the biggest thing in this book is don't face people directly on you redirect their energies you you take mm. the resources rather than and that's what's happening in the in the end of the world war ii rather than you know they were taking taking out the depots and taking away the resources rather than trying to do direct tax and in tai chi and qigong this is the idea is that you don't take people head on because because it's pointless you know it is especially you know like the, you know you're, you're you're the big the, the big scary demons well Though with the big scare, like I used to be as a kid, have dreams of monsters chasing me. And then one day, this was about nine, and I realized to turn around and face it and just say, what do you want? And when I turned around and faced it, it was a little bit like the monster from um, uh, the Muppet show, if you re remember the big hairy one, the huge <laughs> one. And when I faced it, it burst into tears and said, you're yes. meant to be running. Yeah. And, and you know that's my purpose and for me that was a trigger to what not like this whole boggy ghostbuster thing it's a whole trigger to to know that that dark you know darkness and light have a role and mm -hmm. and and when you step out of that role they either will ignore you or they'll run away from you oh you've been them. muted oh um I, uh, sorry lauren i've got one more question here and then we'll go back to you um, you see, my issue is that with my journey of awakening, um, I, 
got, had a big transcendent experience at something called Landmark, which was a sort of a, a Zen big nothing experience where, you know, got a real uh, transcendent experience of that. And that was around about 2007. And then I started going down the rabbit holes and I saw Zeitgeist and, you know, it was just one thing after another with uh, the truth of movement. And what I'm noticing now with the, the people that are into QAnon is very often when are you, you know, talk about Bill Gates or immediately it's like, well, it's not going to stop until he's dead or, you know, it's got to be death for these people. And most of the, it's a, it is a right wing uh, movement, the Q thing, even though I'm, you know, I'm following it and I, I, I sympathize with it. Um, their, their answer is that these people have got to die. What, what's your take on that? Well, well, I, I think that it, it's not so much, well, I, I think for me, it's not Q that's saying these people got to die. Q, what, what, Q wants these people to be arrested and to be, you know, take, uh, yeah. but it's the people following Q that sees there is no good or bad that just is. And the problem is, when you're, you know, you, you know, I've, you know, in the past, a dictator gets taken out and then somebody comes in with all good intentions and they end up being a dictator as well. Because if you use the same system to take away one bad guy, you'll just create another bad guy. You know, like, you know even in, in, you know, in politics, you know, these you know, liberals and conservatives and, and all of that, while you're still fighting in that system, you're still fighting in that system. You can't beat that system. You need to totally change the way you do it to you know to step forward now people will say that's impossible well no nothing's but people would say us staying at home for you know, um, and being locked down or you know that'd be impossible that'd be the end of the world it's happened and i if you read the hero's journey everything is has cycles and we this was meant to happen you know whether it was started by the good guys the bad guys the banana people or, or the goat people it doesn't actually matter is that this was meant to happen because whatever happens me personally i see it going in a, a, a positive way but whatever happens it can't go back to what it was yeah. there was lots of people who were dissatisfied un unhappy and we were all starting to wake up anyway uh, um and and that's why you needed this to to put us in this situation where you're at home and you're in your four five six walls and you have to actually start facing certain troops you the way i look at it is i think it's actually it. making me stronger because i mean i do have health issues that i'm struggling with i deal with chronic pain and a lot of the things you were talking about and because I was quite neurotic before this thing happened. So I was somebody that washed my hands a lot and everything before anyway. And what happened, started to happen is that, you know, I was washing my hands so much that they were getting really kind of raw and, you know, like uncomfortable. And so basically now what I'm doing is I'm doing so many things for my health now. I've ordered vitamin D, I've ordered zinc, vitamin C. I'm going out and getting lots of sun. So I'm, you know, whatever comes at us next, I'm almost, I'm, I'm so, you know, looking after myself now that it actually, it's gone the opposite way with me. I'm, I'm just, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going into fear. I'm, I'm wanting to build myself up as much yeah. as I can. So it's been a, it's pushed me in a good direction, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, Q's a good thing to look at, but there's two other people I would say you, you must read, especially if you have any health conditions whatsoever. Bruce Lipton, think of the T. Lipton tea, Bruce Lipton, yeah. Bru Bruce Lee, Lipton tea, Bruce Bruce Lipton, <laughs> and also Joe Dipenza. That one I have no idea. Uh, just but Dipenza, Orenza. Oh, sorry, other than that, my, I started first of all with Louise Hay. She was the beginning for me. Louise Hay and Brandon Bays. Brandon right. Bay's journey. Um, I have mentors that educated me in my 20s. I mean, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be walking around now. When I came over from Israel, I had awful IBS, the worst IBS you can imagine. And I met this incredible man called Keith Bascom in, in Ealing. Changed my life. He was absolutely amazing. He was like a witch doctor. He was so amazing. And I didn't know what the hell he was doing. And what he was doing is he was doing kinesiology with me. He was giving me masses of homeopathy and changed my diet. And within two weeks, my IBS had gone mm -hmm. and he became my mentor. So with me, um, when it comes to the body, uh, I had a massive awakening a long, long time ago. And I haven't touched medication for uh, probably more than 20 years now, except when I broke my leg. and. They gave me something for that because I broke my leg and I was in hospital. 
But because I was given, a, genetically, I was given a weak body, not very strong. I shouldn't really be here. As I say, if it wasn't for, um, and Philip Day, who taught me about apricot kernels and, heal, and how to prevent and heal cancer. And, with, you know, without these amazing people that obviously I was meant to, to, to live. I was meant to go on and do the things that I'm doing. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here because genetically the body I was given was not very strong and I didn't, I didn't know anything about how you create your body. So what I'm trying to say is when this virus thing came out, I'd already, I haven't been to the doctor ever <laughs> for like bronchitis, everything, no antibiotics. I've been healing everything, as I say, for more than 20 years, maybe, so, maybe even before I met Martin. And always, always healed every single time. Every single time I managed to heal myself, apart from the menopause, which I still struggle a bit. So when this thing came out, it was like, oh, okay, then I'll do it. I'll do what somebody tells me. I'll take, if they say you've got to take collodial silver, which I know I've healed infections, I've healed gum infections, teeth, things that dentists give you like these things, you know, massive tablets. And I thought, okay, well, I'll do whatever they tell me. I'll take huge amounts of vitamin C, I'll take um, collodial silver, black seed oil, um, I'll get happy, excuse me, I'll get happy, I'll do what I love, and, and that's it. And then like Martin, my husband started doing the same and we became more or less vegan. We're not purely vegan. And that's it. And there was never an, an ounce, an atom of fear of getting sick from this thing. My intuition, my consciousness said, but you know what this is, Lauren. You see, what happened to the bushfires in Australia? Suddenly they ended. What happened before that? We were in America twice, okay? The first time we were in America, there was a false flag where Korea was going to nuke everyone. But it was everywhere, mainstream, everywhere. You couldn't get away from it. You're going to be nuked by Korea. Trump is going to do this and whatever. Then the second time we went to America, it was all about Putin. And Putin was going to pour down clouds of biochemicals on top of everyone. And mm -hmm. we were visitors, and it was bombarded. You were bombarded by it. You sit down for breakfast. It was all about Putin. And then after that, you had another terrorist attack, or suddenly that ended. And then you suddenly got this climate change, we're all going to die. And then you got the bushfires in Australia. And it was huge. You see, this is how my consciousness has developed. It was huge. It was huge. And they were putting all these appeals everywhere. And then suddenly it's finished. And now we've got COVID. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, okay, okay, what the hell? What is going on? So what is going on, Paul? <laughs> what is going on? That, that's the whole point. If you step out of the box and actually just say, like you say, you had, you look all the way back to uh, 2000s. So since the 2000s, there has been incident after incident after incident after incident. Um, you know, there's always been this fear and then there's this new fear and this other fear. And it's, and, and it's, well, well what's, what's the overlying, what's the average thing? Fear. Why, why? Why would media, why would government, they, you know, they really push one thing and then it's, it's almost like a fashion, you know, oh, this is the new craze and then, oh, that's it. Now this is the new craze.